if you remember on our 135, we had low engine oil pressure when it was hot. And this is the little Perkins engine oil pump. And this is our relief valve here. It's non-adjustable. And around the back here, we have like a, a G rotor assembly. So I'm going to put a new one in. Um, I'm not going to spend the money on new bearings and all that. We have little, very little crank wear. And I'm just going to put a new one in to, to feel good about it, really. Now, I've, we can actually check this one and see if it's crook or not. And this plate here is held on with three screws. It's a G rotor assembly. And another thing that you can possibly see is down this side of the gears on this corner there is there and here and round here there's actually wear on the gear and the case hardening starting to come off the edge of the gear so that's no good either so so this is going to be a messy job but anyway we'll do it just to show you and I'd, I'd be interested to see myself. So these were tied. I actually sat that down in the vise and give they, each of those screws a smack with the hammer just to loosen them up. And loosen them up it did. So we'll undo this backing plate. You can do this with a feeler gauge, really. And this is the end plate off the pump. Now we have a look here. You can see a little bit of wear there. If I can get it where it's not too shiny. A little bit of wear there. You can just feel that, which probably isn't too bad. I have seen people lap these flat again on a piece of, pay, a piece of glass and a bit of paper and people are on budget, haven't got any money to spend, um, I've seen them do that. You can't turn it round on this pump because it's got riding and that on it, but, um, and, and it's got tapers for the bolts. So, look, that, that isn't too bad. What else we look for too is, there should be a measurement, <coughs> pardon me, on how much this rotor assembly is below the outer surface there. And I can actually feel that that's below the outer surface. I'll get the O-ring out. Boy, that O-ring's hard. I'll say the oil pump's been fairly hot. There we go. So I'll go and get the little liner height gauge that we had. <clears throat> Whoop, sorry about that. And see if we can get a surface that we can work off. So I'll hold it on that screw there. I can feel it's below the height of the gauge there. But if we hold this, oh, I'll turn him around. If I hold that level against the side of the housing and zero it, then bring it across and get it level again. I'm looking for a measurement that I can reproduce. You can just see that in the screen. 
I'll bring you up just a little bit. So yeah, we're, we're level on a, on a triangle surface here. So we're sitting at zero. We bring it out onto the rotor and we have force there. Now this rotor is not a good, the centre part's not a good reading because I've actually got the pump sitting on that. So I'll try and pick him up a bit. Give him a wipe. So same measurement once again. See if I can just get a nice, a nice constant zero. And we come down on the outer. Another hand. Okay, that's not a bad reading. Turn him around so you can see it. Okay, so now we've got zero. Come across onto the rotor. Yeah, about four. And across into the centre. So it's got four too by the looks of that. I'm not really happy with these readings I'm getting just at the moment. I'm okay, we're still on zero there. So four and a half, five there on the rotor, on the outer rotor. Showing about three on the central one. So there's another measurement we can do here as well. And I'll go and look that up shortly. I'm pretty sure um, five there was throwaway. But anyway, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. Now, if we get a feeler gauge. Um, we can measure down the side of the housing here. And that's ten thousandths of an inch. Now between the rotor and the outer, Wear everywhere in there. That's that's easy. Ten thou in between the, the rotating assemblies. I reckon five's the maximum in there. Yeah, this may be a little less, but there's an easy ten thou between the outside rotor and the housing. I'll go and look it up now. I'm pretty sure it's five. I'll be back in a second. Well, I've got the laptop sitting in behind here. Um, and it tells us how to inspect the pump and some of the measurements we should have. And I'll read it out here. It says, um, 
Examine the rotors for cracks and storing. The clearance between the maximum diameter of the inner rotor, which is this fella, and the maximum diameter of the inner rotor and the minimum diameter of the outer driven rotor at all points, if this clearance is above six thousandths of an inch, a new oil pump should be fitted. So we have ten in there that fits in easily. So we were losing pressure there. Now it says the clearance between the driven rotor now, the outside one is the driven, um, the inside one is the driver. So the clearance between the driven rotor and the pump body must not exceed 10 thou. So that's on the outside here. So we're not allowed to exceed 10 thou. Um, and if the clearance between the rotors here and the top of the pump, which is what we're checking with the dial gauge, must not exceed 3 thou. And so, like, we're four and a half, five there. We're 10 easily here and we're 10 inside here so poor old oil pump didn't have much of a hope really did it no. that's why we didn't have much oil pressure but <coughs> now we're here and we're going to fit a new oil pump anyway we don't just want a junky old one in our new tractor do we so let's just pull the relief valve out because it's there need to get under the end there. Just pick that up a bit. If I go that way you might be able to see it better. That's a good view for you. Yeah, it's brittle, isn't it? They shouldn't be that brittle. They should be nice and soft. Okay. We've got the split pin out. We should have a little retainer, I believe. That's a little, that's a little cap to hold your spring central. It's a little cup, I should say, more than a cap. Here is the spring that holds it in, or the spring that holds it in, that holds pressure against the plunger. Now I would expect, that was just the thing on my hand still. Plunger is moving. There we go. I'm probably bumping it on there. I've put a burr on the outside now. That's what I get for being rough, I suppose. And that's the plunger. So it goes plunger that way, the tit for the spring to sit on, and then the little cap that I just dropped. There we go on there and then the, the split pin coming in behind it. So that's our working group. And there's nothing else down there. <coughs> Pardon me. I was expecting to see some shims of some sort. There's no shims in there. 
So yes, I thought there may have been, um, may have been shims, but they might be able to machine them that accurately nowadays. It, um, it doesn't really matter. They, can, they must obviously be able to get them to where they want them um, in this regard. I didn't see a filter bypass valve or a relief in the filter housing. So, yes, I'm presuming this does everything. So there you go, that's what the oil pump looks like, grubby looking thing. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> we'll be replacing this, so um, yeah, we won't put this together, this will just go into scrap from here.